ancient scales right now are currently selling for 1.6. Ever since Vorkath was announced and showed that ancient scales are going to be used to be making the new Draco Lich armor, these scales have shot up in price. They went as high as uh, I think it was 2 mil each uh, when the announcement came out, and then they went down to about 1.3 and stayed stable, but right now, at time of recording, they are 1.6 mil each. And you may be thinking to yourself, I gotta get me some of these ancient scales either for an armor set or you just want to sell them to make the big GP. And today I'm going to be showing you what I've been doing recently to get six runs an hour consistently at ED1, which at time of recording is about 130 million GP per hour, which is definitely one of the better money making methods in game. So let's head over to Wars Retreat. We'll discuss the preset a little bit and what I'm using gear wise, and then just immediately get into a run. So before each boss hour, I kind of have a bank preset with just general purpose items to help me with my hours. And these items include incense sticks. I use Quarm, Lantidime, and Spirit Weed. They increase your poison damage, let your overloads and other potions at that time limit uh, last a bit longer. And Spirit Weed recovers the special bar on your familiar quicker. With Calg, it's a little bit pointless, but I use it anyway to help out there. Powder of Penance acts like the Penance Aura for damage taken. It gives you prayer points back, so you don't have to drink your Blessed Flask or any other prayer source as often. And in this method, I will be using Calg Demon. I pretty much Calg Demon everything other than if I'm straight necro camping, then I'll use Blood Reaver or Ripper Demon respectively, you know, depending on if I need uh, HP or not. And other than that, I just have potions here. I have an Elder Overload so I can uh, overload at the bank. Some bosses you can go quick enough to where you don't need an overload in the inventory. Uh, weapon Poison Triple Plus, again, for extra weapon poison damage where it's applicable. And the Summoning Renewal kind of does the same thing as the Spirit Weed Incense. So moving on to the meat and potatoes, the actual preset we will be using today. Now, yes, this is a hybrid preset. <laughs> But don't be alarmed, there is nothing super complex when it comes to this preset. Now, as far as switching between armor sets and weapon sets, you can just as easily click them and that will work just fine. You know, you can just sit here and click through the inventory and it's not too bad, it just takes a little bit of practice. However, what I like to do is on my mouse, I have 12 thumb buttons here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. All right, you can see a little better if I bring up the full screen webcam. I have a bunch of thumb buttons here on the side and these bottom eight, I just run my thumb across for the armor switch by either holding shift or control on my keyboard. And if we go back to the escape menu, as you can see, I just hold down control, run my thumb across all my thumb buttons, there's eight of them there. I only have seven inputs right now, but if you need an extra input for a full eight-way swap, you can easily add that in somewhere on your action bar. And then when I need to swap back, I just hold shift and then run my thumb across all of the buttons again, and that will get me back to magic. That's an easy way that I have found that is completely one-to-one -one as far as inputs are concerned. So that way you don't have to run into any issues with macroing and whatnot, as that is against the game rules. Jagex has confirmed multiple times on Twitter and a few other places that one-to-one one inputs on separate keys are perfectly fine so keep it to one to one and you're in the clear anyways going over the rest of the preset i just have some swaps here like a chroming swap to make g chain hit more targets obviously fsoa is very powerful for magic you'll want to bring that i just put flanking in here because i have the extra space for it and didn't really need anything else and it can be useful at sanctum and on the head at siru dom mines are very useful for the crystals uh, blast blast just a prayer source. For EOFs, I just have a G staff and the T70 to 90 spec for uh, necromancy. Nothing too special there. I have a death touch brace as well for when I can't be using uh, cinder banes. Uh, some targets in ED1 are not susceptible to poison, mostly Siru and the crystals. And oddly enough, the crystals do hit back and trigger DTB. You will notice some of the hits on there, so I just bring it for that case specifically. Lucky charms to help get out a little bit of extra extra GP, Vuln Bombs are pretty self-explanatory, just as Adrenaline Renewal, uh, more damage on things with Vuln Bombs, they give you 10% buff on all targets you throw them at, and Adrenaline Renewal is very nice for ultimates. My rune pouches just kind of follow the bog standard setup, feel free to pause the video to see what runes are in here, it's also in the PVME Discord. Now since the run does go over 8 minutes, I do bring an extra overload, I usually sip it just after or during soon. And last but certainly not least is the Power Burst of Acceleration. This 
item is very, very useful for getting through some parts of the dungeon. I use this in the first room, and you'll see later when we're doing the example run of where I use this, but it is a very handy item. Also, one more mention, I do have Zamorgiel's Nexus. You can just use the standard Nexus to hold all of your Necro runes and Ectoplasm. Uh, the level here doesn't really matter. We're not going to be taking advantage of the extra 15 levels too much. You technically can get better diverts with a higher level shield. However, it is not nearly as important as you might think it is. So if you just have the standard tier 60 uh, Nexus, that will be perfectly fine. And all you need for that one is an Ensold Bar, a Silver Bar, and a Cut Sapphire. And then you just go over to the place in the City of Um, where you craft the Necromancy Armor itself, and it is in the tier 60 tab. Other than that, I just have the Hybrid Zuck Cape. If you have the two standard ones, you could easily just drop something like the Almighty Egg, even though it is a good luck charm. I just bring it for RNG and no other reason, so you could easily drop this if you want to be a little more serious about the dungeon, and just bring the cape swaps if you need them. And that is where the eighth slot could come into play. I usually just have these two slots here on my action bar for when I swap between any two styles. Or you can just be total Giga Chad, like I said before, and just click your switches just fine. You just gotta do what works for you. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Grim is very nice for crit chance and is probably one of the better hybrid setups because magic really benefits from it. And same with Reaver's Ring. Uh, there's no ring for uh, necromancy specifically, so I just use Reaver's in its case and it works well enough for magic. But I think that is enough rambling. Let's go ahead and just get into an example run. One more quick side note before we get into this example run. The relics I am using are Luck of the Dwarves, Conservation of Energy, and Blessing of Het. I use Luck of the Dwarves because I'm deathly afraid of getting a cheese and tomato bada. However, if you don't care about really going for an HSR chance because it's so rare, just run something like Fury of the Small with Death Ward, or maybe run something like Berserker's Fury with Font of Life, and always keep conservation of energy. Now, as far as aura usage is concerned, I like to use Supreme Invigorate. Uh, Majorat works just fine, as well as something as simple as Vampirism. You could also try and run Maniacal to boost magic damage. So with this dungeon, I like to start off with magic, uh, make sure our Grim's on, make sure everything else is good, all right, we are good to go, and I like to surge down this little hallway and then run over to the stairs and click on this middle line right here, and then surge bladed dive, hit a corrupt blast, and then G chain with an omni, I'm just gonna D breath whatever's left, maybe ice rack, target cycle is very helpful here. And then I like to hit my acceleration potion and kind of surge blade dive all the way to this corner and wait for one of the mobs to kind of go on a diagonal towards you and then greater chain that, charge up a detonate and release it with an auto attack and a tsunami. Sometimes one of them doesn't get hit, so I'll just kind of like play around, maybe use a staff spec or something. Here I'll anticipate, hit corrupt blast on the northern one and put a Magma Tempest in the center, and then G-Chain with a Wild Magic. And then kind of just play around with basics to get the rest of them, and go through the door. You could also use Omni Power there. Now here what I like to do is swap over to Necromancy, hit Threads of Fate, Soul Sap the middle guy, and then hit Volley, and everything dies. It's that simple with Threads, it's really powerful. And then I'll kind of... G chain here, and since we have Omni Power, I'll go ahead and use it, and maybe corrupt the northern guy, and just play with auto D breath. And now we just run through this part. You don't have to kill any of the R hats or anything like that. And I'll blade a dive and surge around. Maybe heal up a smidge. And try and surge and blade a dive on diagonals. It'll take a little bit of learning because there are some odd walls here that are invisible. So just play around with it and you'll get used to it. And then here, I like to Greater Chain, and just hit a couple basics. I also like to Devotion and Anticipate beforehand, just to help out a little bit on taking damage. And then here, once I kill them with magic, I'll swap over to Necromancy, Conjure my army, hit Invoke Death, Command the Ghost, and then start a Living Death with a Volnbaum, hit a Touch of Death, into a Skull, a Bloat, a Soul Sap, I just kind of play from here with maybe a another soul sap, a basic, another soul sap. Death skulls. We're at 12 stacks. I'll disrupt shield this hit. 
and just kind of play with my damage from here. Just kind of doing what sounds good, hitting another Death Skulls before Living Death runs out. Be good a fourth snack for a volley here into a EOF spec. Into a tier 95 weapon spec, and that is Death on Sanctum. Sanctum's pretty straightforward, and as long as you follow that movement, you can trap all the R hats behind the pillar there, and you won't take any damage from them. Now for this next section here, I like to just run straight magic. I don't really use necromancy in too many parts. So I'll just G-chain here, maybe hit the wild magic, and then ice rack this guy. Surge across, and then hit Devotion with a Surge Bladed Dive. G-chain the center of these three mages. Charge a Detonate, release with a D-Breath, and then just kill what is ever, whatever is left. Make sure your range barrier is up so the rangers don't screw you. And then this is the second portion where I like to f use my Acceleration Potion. And just use any old abilities on this guy, some basics to maybe build a bit of Adrenaline. And then Surge on through. Now here what I like to do is click on these stairs and then blade a dive over to these tiles here. And then I'll G-chain Omni Power these guys and hit a D-breath before the rest of the uh, Omni Power hits. So sometimes it KOs them, sometimes it doesn't. And I like to run up the side here, surge blade a dive, target the center of... Oh, it appears I took off my weapon somehow. I like to G-chain the center guy in the row of five, and then release it with a Tsunami. You can also corrupt this uh, eastern guy before the uh, G-chain Deto and whatnot, and that'll usually help clean him up a little bit quicker. But anyways, on these, I'll just use another G-chain, and maybe Asphyxiate. Sometimes I'll add magic and do some more basics, but sometimes I Asphyxiate, and it seems to work about the same. And then I'll Surge, use an Ice Auto on these guys, a Corrupt Blast, maybe an Ice Rack, G-Conk that guy, and then swap over to Necromancy, get a Soul Sap stack, Soul Sap stack, Invoke Death, Surge Bladed Dive, Threads of Fate, Soul Sap again, we're at five stacks, and then Volley, and they all die. And that is that room taken care of. Surge Bladed Dive over to this tile, swap back to Magic. G-Chain, charge a Detonate, release it with a D-Breath. Then I like to surge down to this uh, tile here, click over one to the east, hit an Anticipate, and then Surge Bladed Dive, and then Target Cycle with a Sun and a Smoke Cloud. If that's a little bit too complicated for you, you can easily just get the smoke cloud off later and just worry about the sun placement. And do a couple abilities. Devotion, one is a couple seconds into a spin. The spin is random, so you just kind of have to uh, use some intuition there of knowing when to hit Devotion to last the rest of the spin. Charge up a detonate, maybe release it with an Omni Power and hit Tendies. Back up a little bit to avoid some of the magic hits. Into a couple more G-staffs. And that puts us into the Thrashing Waters phase. This is where you can kind of take a breath and just run around for a little bit. You can use magic for this part, but what I actually like to do is swap over to Necromancy and start building up stacks for the next phase. Also, you can get Invoke Death and put it on Masuda. It will last the rest of the fight. And just start running around and killing the Thrashing Waters. If you're close enough to these, you will get this percentage build up here. And that is just a percent damage reduction on Phase 3. So if you've been getting one shot by the uh, Mage hits he does on the third phase. And the range hits are absolutely destroying you. This is kind of a mechanic you can take advantage of to get some damage reduction. So you can use things like Split Soul and other things of the sort to help out with your damage and and get not completely clapped, I should say. Because it's no fun getting clapped by Masuda. He's probably the least favorite boss of any boss in RuneScape as far as the community is concerned. You can drink your overload here. And just keep running around and killing these. And then at some point, I will go ahead and conjure my army. Command the ghost. And then I like to stay up here for the last little bit. 
And if they're far enough to the south, you can just stay up here to the north and they won't really hit you. And then our living death, hit a devotion. Or not a devotion, a uh, divert. We got hit there, so we got our divert. And then just kind of play from here, dump all of our stacks under soul sap. This is where I'm probably going to use a majority of my food here. Get our second D skulls off. And he's pretty much dead. And since I'm up here, you can just immediately go down the hidden staircase that spawns. Now here I like to swap back to magic, have magic overhead. Surge bladed dive over to this section here. Hold off devotion as long as I dare. And then just kill the center defense pylon. And these two here next to the chest. And I like to make sure that I'm on uh, Insight Fear so I can build up stacks. And then I'll use my Acceleration Potion one more time just to get into position a little bit faster at Siru. Hit him with a Smoke Cloud. And do not use your a, Adrenaline Potion here for the Sunshine. Uh, if you want some extra Adren, you can Divert. Because the Magic Hits will pretty much always hit. You just have to wait for one to actually come out. Maybe go for a Auto Wild Magic into a Asphyxiate. Try not to forget to Vuln Bomb him like I do usually. Vulns are kind of the thing I'm... I forget a lot of things in this game, but Vuln is definitely one of them. But right there, I just did a Detonate and released it with an Omni Power into Attendees. And I'm trying to make sure I'm high Adren here once we get into 7.2. And there he is. After this attack, sometimes you can get it before, sometimes you go after. But then you can just go to this tile here and immediately jump up. Hit your Vuln Bomb, right click on the crystal, target it with a Death Skulls, point your mines, and conjure your army, hit Invoke Death, command the Ghost, and all you need before you start your Death Skulls is a couple stacks. Or your, I mean your Living Death, not your Death Skulls. But you can use Death Skulls a couple times, just keep building stacks. Here I'm going to Invoke Death during the Death animation of that crystal. And hit my Soul Sap. Another Death Skulls. We have 12 stacks here, so I'm going to go ahead and use two Finger Blasts. Get our fifth stack of Soul Saps. Use a couple basics here. Invoke Death, Surge, Death Skull, Volley, and then the two weapon specs. And that should be dead. Yep, there it is. And we got 41 scales. That is always very nice to see. I'm um, at current prices. Let's just do some math real quick of how much that is. 41, and they're about 1.6 mil each. So that was a 65 mil drop for about 10 minutes worth of work. Now, when I'm sitting here commentating these, it's going to take me a little bit longer to run through the dungeon. Down in the description below, I will leave a link to my current PB with this method. I was timing these runs last night just to make sure that this is absolutely six runs an hour. And my average time, once I kind of got all my binds set, because I kind of forget to set binds some of the times, uh, was a right around nine minutes. So that gives you a minute to bank in between each run, which is more more than enough time. So once you learn the method and kind of get through it, as you can see, it's just a matter of using the right combat style at the right time. And there is a little bit of room for interpretation. If you see something and it makes more sense to run through a certain way, then feel free to do that. However, using magic to fill in the gaps of Threads of Fate when it's on cooldown, because it is a 45 second cooldown, you can't just use it everywhere. And with Necromancy, if you're really trying to spam out the Scythe abilities, Adrenaline becomes a kind of a concern so i like to substitute magic in with greater chain just to do it and as you can see it is a very fast run through the dungeon and for those here that are curious and still watching we'll just go ahead and take a look at the chest i've been running this dungeon a little bit and the prices are going off the charts right now as you can see we have 400 scales but it's almost 750 mil in the chest this dungeon is highly worthwhile to do right now so feel free to use this method to your heart's content and farm out a bunch of ancient scales scales, your bank account will thank you in the long run. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next guide. Peace.